Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn AE tips, tricks, and shortcuts in less than 7 minutes. No BS, just AE. In this episode, I'll show you how to use a few simple expressions that will really speed up your animation time. These expressions are very simple, but be aware that there are some very complicated expressions out there, and I highly recommend you checking those out. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so today I wanted to show you a few expressions that are very easy to remember and very easy to implement. If you're more advanced, you may have seen these before, but just in case, I'm gonna go over a handful of expressions and hopefully this will help you out. Okay, so here I have this vector image that I've converted to a shape layer. What I wanna show you here is called the wiggle expression. And this is a very, very common one and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before. But let's hit R for rotation. And if you Alt click on this stopwatch, as you can see, it already makes your transform property red, which means that it's ready for you to type in an expression. So let's type in wiggle, and then you wanna do an open parenthesis, and then there are gonna be two numbers. The first number is the speed, the second number is the amount. And these two numbers are gonna be separated by a comma with no spaces. Say for example, we do one comma five. Something that's very important to remember, whenever you do these expressions, particularly that involve rotation, you wanna be mindful of where your anchor point is, and see our anchor point is right here. So let's uh, hit zero. And now you can see how it changes if you manipulate these numbers. Say for example, let's change this one to three, let's change this five to 15. And as you can see, it's quite a bit different. Uh, this is a shape layer of a gear. And basically what I wanna do is I want it to rotate. You can either keyframe this, you know, you could put a keyframe here and then go forward. The problem is that once it gets to the second keyframe, it's gonna stop. So if you know that you want this gear to move indefinitely, what you wanna do is use the time expression. Holding down Alt, click on the stopwatch next to rotation, and you wanna type in time, and then the multiplication sign or asterisk, and then your number. So say let's put in 50, and there we can see it moving. So now, say you wanted it to go in the opposite direction, just put a minus in front of the 50 and it will turn in the opposite direction. Let's change this to 150. So the basic point is with the time expression, you can manipulate the rotation of these objects and it's going to rotate from its anchor point. See, for example, if we move the anchor point out to the edge, and that's not at all what you want. So to use this expression, you're gonna type the word time, use the multiplication sign, and then put in your amount either a positive or a negative. This next one, this is a loop out cycle. If you've ever had a situation where you needed text to blink off and on, this one may be a good one for you to check out. So you put a keyframe for opacity at 100%, move forward about 10 frames, put another keyframe at 100%, hit page down to move forward one frame. Let's change this to zero, move forward to 20 frames, add another keyframe for zero, page down, and then one more keyframe for 100. And the reason why you wanna do this is because your first and last keyframe need to have the same value in order for this expression to work. Click Alt, click on the stopwatch next to opacity, and now there's this little arrow right here. Click on that, and you want to choose Property Loop Out Cycle. And what this basically does is it takes whatever's between the first and last keyframe and it repeats it. So see, we only have five keyframes, yet it continues to repeat. And now you can change the duration between these keyframes and it will automatically update. So say we move this over like that, something faster, something slower. You can even take out the second keyframe in the fourth to have it kind of fade in and out. The basic thing to remember when using this expression is you want your first keyframe and your last keyframe to have the same value. And you're gonna have, generally speaking, an odd number of keyframes. Now, this can be used for position and for rotation. If you set a keyframe first, say at 0%, move forward, say about 15 frames, change this to five, go up to one second and change this back to zero. And we'll apply the same expression to rotation that we did for opacity. So property, loop out, cycle. So now this will move in a very distinct pattern between zero and five and back to zero, repeating over and over again. So you don't get that kind of random hovering look if that's not what you're looking for. Instead, you get this more controlled zero to five, zero to five, zero to five repeating. Hit P for position, put a keyframe here, go forward about 15, so we move it down, go back to a second, and you can even copy and paste this first keyframe. So if we hit Alt and click the stopwatch, click this arrow, property, loop out cycle, it's the same concept. 
So see, we only have these three keyframes here, but this will continue to move indefinitely. Now this expression could be very, very helpful if you have, say, an animation where you need someone to wave or you have a character that's jumping up and down, something like that. Instead of having to keyframe that over and over and over and over again, you can just use this expression and have very few keyframes and get the same effect. Okay, so now this last one, I just found out about this one recently because I do a lot of animations that may include timers. What I've done in the past, and maybe you've done the same thing, is you may uh, have a text layer and then use uh, effect, text, numbers. And you have to change your font here and there's like a lot of controls you have to end up using. And then also it won't recognize this as a 3D text layer. So it can get really, really cumbersome. So what you wanna do in this case is uh, come over here to your effects presets. Let's type in slider. We want to pull the slider control over onto our text layer. And we want to open up our text option here. Under source text, you want to alt click on the stopwatch. And let's pull this down to the slider control. So now whatever value we have on the slider will show up as our number. But the way that you do a countdown, start this off with 10. Add a keyframe, go forward, say about four seconds, and hit zero. And what you end up getting is you get all of these these are decimal points. So in order to avoid that, what you wanna do is come back to this expression. And it's very important that you type this exactly this way with a capital M, let's type math dot round with a lowercase, open parentheses, go to the end, end parentheses. And what that does is it rounds your numbers up to the nearest whole number. So now we have our countdown. Expressions and scripts are a huge time saver. These few expressions I showed you today are just the tip of the very large iceberg that is After Effects. So there will be more tutorials like this in the future. I hope this helped you out. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you'd like to see. Thanks everybody, see you next time.